Now we can go, we can go, we can go, we can go, we can go. We can go, we can go, we can go, we can go, we can go. Ah, suck my dick. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Outriders. What's this? Two Pyro videos in a row? That's right. Today, with the help of my good friend Naylor, we're bringing you the most fun build in Outriders that I have personally played since its launch. I want to give full credit to Naylor for coming up with this version of the build, and a quick shout out to one of my homies Jinx who was messing around with something similar back during the World Slayer launch. Make sure to check out Naylor's YouTube, links down in the description below to see its other flashy and hot clips for Outriders. The build we're showcasing today is the Hadoken Firepower Melee Pyro using the Scourge Zealot set. This is quite possibly the best Firepower Pyro build that exists in Outriders and simply outclasses the Maxwell Demon set version. Like I always say, a good build in Outriders needs to have single target damage and AoE clear. While the Maxwell set has great single target damage, it lacks good AoE clear. 90% of the time in Outriders we are fighting mobs where AoE clear is mandatory. That's where our set bonus, AKR Hadoken comes in. More on this in just a bit. This build can one-shot or kill in solos with the right setup, step-by-step -step guide on this later, and can blow up anything that gets in your way with either your Hadoken melees or blasting your guns on those pesky arbiters. As you can see from the gameplay clips that are showing, this build does it all. It does not matter if you're playing solo, duo, trios, or hard carrying your friends, nothing can get in the way of our Hadokens, except staggers. We hate getting staggered. Prior to making this build live for everyone to see and learn from, Naylor and I Mostly Nailer here. This is one of those situations where we were doing a group project and he did 90% of the work and I'm just making a video PowerPoint presentation for you all. Made sure to literally test everything, and I sincerely mean everything, to make sure this is the most optimal and final endgame build for using the Scourge Zealot set. Enough of me blabbing for the sake of the intro, let's take a look at the Scourge Zealot set and its bonus as well as the skills we'll be using. The Scourge Zealot set transforms the Pyromancer's melee skill into a projectile aka our Hadoken, that explodes upon impact, dealing X damage and inflicting ash to enemies within a 5 meter radius. Damage of the projectile increases by 25% for each enemy hit with the Feet to Flames, up to 100%. This bonus is spent on the next melee skill usage. A very important note is that the Hadoken damage scales with our firepower. This is why the upcoming Bullet Frenzy Pax note is so crucial for this build. The Hadoken also damages enemies behind walls, above the projectile, below the projectile, and during enemies that are spawning as long as it's within the radius. This is amazing as we can just chuck Hadokens at walls and enemies behind it will die. Chuck a Hadoken near our feet and anything surrounding the radius will die, including pesky birds above us. You'll get the feel for this the more you familiarize yourself with the skill. The skills we are using for our build are Ash Blast, Volcanic Rounds, and Feed the Flames. As usual, we are using Ash Blast for the amazing CC combined with the Ash Increase range mod and provides us with a very nice debuff as well with the Death Sentence mod. Volcanic Rounds is going to be one of our main damage sources second to our Hadokens. The rounds will do massive damage thanks to Bullet Frenzy and elites and bosses will just drop like that. Volcanic Rounds also applies burn in an AoE radius which is nice if you choose to pair it with the Bullet Kindling mod. A fun note about Volcanic Rounds and all other round skills in general is that they ignore enemy armor and go through resistance piercing and also deal anomaly damage. This means we don't need to invest in the armor piercing stat and we basically double dip the debuff bonus from Death Sentence. Super nice. The last skill we are using is Feed the Flames, which really puts it all together and without it this build would just not work. Remember our set bonus. It relies on Feed the Flame stacks, up to 4, to deal that massive 100% increase in damage upon our next melee. Not only that, but Feed the Flame also applies Ash on enemies hit and more importantly, is why this build has such amazing survivability as it drains enemies HP and instantly gives it to us. Combined with the many Feed the Flame mods we'll be discussing later in this build guide, Feed the Flames will provide us with infinite ammo so we can maintain 100% uptime of our Bullet Frenzy stacks to nearly infinitely increase our Hadoken damage and our bullet damage. Do note that Feed the Flames does require targets to fully spawn before being able to use this skill. To give a little bit of a sneak peek, we'll be dedicating 5 mods to just Feed the Flames. Moving on to our class tree, let's focus on our class passive as usual for a quick moment. We receive an additional 10% anomaly power and our skills mark damage enemies for 15 seconds. Anytime we kill a marked enemy, we heal by 24% of our max health, another layer of survivability along with Feed the Flames. We'll be going full top tree for this build to invest in all the increases in weapon damage nodes. This is a good time to mention that weapon damage in Outriders is converted into bonus firepower, which our melee scales off of. 
The notable nodes for this tree are of course our weapon damage nodes, Assault Master, Trial by the Ashes, Ashes to Ashes for having every enemy ash apply the vulnerable status, which is also an additional 15% increase in our damage, Hurt twice as long, and Burning Situation. We then branch our remaining nodes to the bottom tree for additional anomaly power and marks accumulation. Note that we also take the hot situation node on the top tree as our anomaly power will be converted to bonus firepower thanks to the anomaly enhancement mod we'll be running on our weapon. More on this a bit later. For our pack tree, we'll start off with coming in hot. Deal 15% more damage to enemies above 80% health and 30% more damage to enemies below 30% health. Nothing really to explain here, the node does what it says. We then take Ash and Wake. Your shots damage all enemies afflicted with Ash within a 4 meter radius of the target, dealing 30% of the damage dealt. This is a nice little bit of AoE for when we are needlessly spraying our bullets without care. You can also opt to take Ash and Regalia if you want a bit more survivability. Next, we take Hot Street. While we're forced to take this node, it's quite nice as critical shots increase our weapon damage by 6%. This bonus lasts 4 seconds and stacks up to 5 times, another nice little way we're increasing our weapon damage meaning both our Hadoukens and bullets get a nice buff. Then we take Carbon Ammo, increasing our magazine size by 200%. This is amazing as we'll be utilizing all 200% of this ammo increase when paired with the best packs node for Firepower Pyromancer in Bullet Frenzy. Shots with Assault Weapons increases your weapon damage by 3%. This effect stacks until you stop shooting. I hinted earlier when we went over Ashen Wake that we will be needlessly spraying our bullets without care, and this note is why. Bullet Frenzy has a max stack of 600 bullets. That's right, 600 bullets. How do we know we're stacking Bullet Frenzy? By this ammo icon above our health bar. While this ammo icon is active, it means that our stacks are stacking. A bit unfortunate that it doesn't show us how many stacks we have, only that it is stacking. How do we know when we've lost our stacks? The ammo icon simply disappears. The most common way we lose our Bullet Frenzy stacks is 1. Opening doors, 2. Getting staggered from enemies, 3. Simply forgetting to keep shooting, and 4. Freeze. Seriously, F freeze. Now, Bullet Frenzy says this effect stacks until you stop shooting, however, we have a 2 second grace window before the stacks completely fall off. This is important as it allows us to use our skills in between shooting. For example, feed the flames to get ammo back so that we can continue to crab walk and never stop shooting our gun like proper degens. You can also input dodge rolls in between this grace window for faster movement. Just remember to continue shooting immediately afterwards to keep stacking the buff. If you've already forgotten, here's another reminder are how Dokens once again scale off our bonus firepower which is directly affected by our increase in weapon damage. The more stacks of Bullet Frenzy we have, the more damage our Hadokens will do. The same applies for our Volcanic Rounds. Note that Bullet Frenzy only works with Assault Type Weapons, so you will not be able to use this build with pistols, shotguns, or sniper rifles. Moving to our Ascension Points, as usual, the first 10 into Anomaly Damage. From there, we want to focus on nodes such as Status Power, Resistance Pierce, Close Range Damage, Weapon Damage, Increased Magazine Size, Damage Against Elites, Critical Damage, Critical Chance, Anomaly Power, and so on. Time for our gear. Let's start with the weapon we are using for this build, the Final Penance. Before we discuss the mods, I want to say that any Assault Weapon type works for this build. We prefer the Final Penance and Double Guns in general as they have a high RPM and a very good ammo capacity to stack our Bullet Frenzy stacks. If you don't have a Final Penance or a Double Gun with the right mods, feel free to use any other Assault Weapons such as Assault Rifles, Light Machine Guns, and SMGs. They all will work relatively well. The tier list for assault weapons for this build is number 1, double guns, number 2, assault rifles, number 3, SMGs, and 4, LMGs. The ideal stats we want on our weapons are crit damage, close range damage, and status power. If I had to choose one stat, I'd pick crit damage over the rest, which the penance conveniently has. The reason we picked the final penance and not a purple double gun with those stats for example is finding a purple double gun with the right stats and mods can take some time, but not impossible. As you can see here, I have looted one that I consider to be a god roll for this build, but still have chosen to go with the final penance for the higher firepower, as higher firepower means more Hadouken damage. If my god roll version had higher firepower, I'd use it over the penance in a heartbeat. The higher firepower will become more important when we go over the one shot Okriel guide a bit later. The final penance also comes rolled with the anomaly enhancement mod on the secondary slot by default, so it's a lot easier to find one with three mods we'll be using in Fortress. Anomaly Enhancement, and Dark Sacrifice. 
Fortress is great here as it's going to give us additional survivability, but more importantly at max stacks, a 25% increase in our damage, which means more Hadouken damage and more Volcanic Rounds damage. Nice. Anomaly Enhancement will be giving us a passive 40% increase in our firepower based off of our Anomaly Power. As a reminder, we have a good chunk of Anomaly Power thanks to our class nodes and Ascension Points and an upcoming mod in Anomaly Echo, so this mod gets a lot of value. Lastly, for Dark Sacrifice, we sacrifice a measly drain of 25% of our max HP in exchange for a whopping 35% increase in our weapon damage. With all the survivability our build has with Feed the Flames, class passives, etc., the health drain from this mod is negligible. It is not going to be the reason you are dying in Expeditions or Trials. Trust me. If you are not able to get all three mods on your weapon, that's fine. Focus on either Dark Sacrifice with Anomaly Enhancement or Fortress with Anomaly Enhancement. We prefer Dark Sacrifice over Fortress, however. For secondary and pistols, it really doesn't matter much. If you have another assault weapon you want to try and run for certain situations, feel free to use that here. I personally prefer the tactical AR on my secondary for when I want to not crab walk 24-7 and just play the build like a traditional firepower build. I'll go more on the two ways we can play this build after we finish the gear breakdown. Heading to our armor gear pieces, the attributes we want to prioritize for our non-set pieces are bonus firepower, close range damage, and status power. Quick note on status power, we want ideally 3 pieces of our gear with status power due to the status power penalty nerf at higher apocalypse tier. This will make sure our ash and vulnerable status is applied long enough for maximum value. If you don't have 3 pieces with status power, you can get by with 2, but 3 is ideal. Remember to also upgrade your shards for the attributes as they make a huge difference. Starting with our headpiece, we are running the torturous mask as it comes with our ideal stats and bonus firepower, close range damage, and more importantly, the status power. The mods we're running here are Death Sentence, Brawl, and Anomaly Echo. Death Sentence, as I mentioned earlier, is a bonus we get to double dip on as Pyro because we get both the 40% weapon damage and 30% anomaly damage bonus when enemies are affected by the Ash Blast skill for 5 seconds. This debuff is not tied to the Ash status. Remember, our Volcanic Rounds do anomaly damage, and weapon damage also increases our Volcanic Rounds damage as well as our Hadoukens. A good tip for more Hadoken damage is to first Ash Blast so we apply the Death Sentence debuff to our enemies, which will also apply the Vulnerable status to those enemies thanks to our Class Node, then launch our Hadoken. Our second mod we're running here is Brawl for the 100% increase in our melee skill damage. This needs no explanation as this means our Hadoukens do even more damage. For our Apocalypse mod, we are running Anomaly Echo. This mod has great value for us as we get to benefit from both the firepower and anomaly power bonus on skill activation. If you've forgotten, thanks to our weapon mod and anomaly enhancement, 40% of the anomaly power this mod provides gets converted to bonus firepower. If you do not have the Torturer's Mask, other helmets that can work for this build are Old Reliable, Ivory and Bone, Defiled Visage, Sergio's Beret, and Maxwell Demon. Just remember, Torturer's is what we want for that status power attribute, but these options will do in a pinch. The chest we're running for this build is the Scourge Sealet's armor with the mods Concussive Force, Ashen Boost, and Captain Hunter. Concussive Force is a S tier mod for this build as it increases our melee damage by 25%, but more importantly increases the range of our melee by 50%. Now by default, the radius of the Hadoukens thanks to our Zealot set is 5 meters, so a 50% increase puts this to 7.5 meters. However, from the testing Nailer has done, it is confirmed to increase it to 10 meters, so a 100% increase in our range and not 50%. This does make sense as Concussive Force prior to being patched to 50% increase in radius was actually a 100% increase. This was never documented as this change came after the first beta, but Play-Doh never forgets. I do wonder if PCF just updated the tooltip to 50% and forgot to actually make this change, completely not surprised. Either way, this is great for us as it makes our Hadoukens more Hadouken. Our second mod here is Ashen Boost. This one is pretty simple and provides us with a nice 12% increase in our damage to enemies that are ashed. Our Ash Blast applies ash and so does our Feet to Flames, so a very practical mod and it just so happens to come natively on the chest piece. As for Apocalypse mod, we have good old Captain Hunter, you've heard this in every build guide, but in case you forgot, this mod should be in every build as a 16% damage increase to elites, which does include Alpha Peferos, is a no-brainer. No recommendations for a different chest piece, we want the Zealot armor. Moving to our pants, we're using the Scorch Zealot waist cloth with the mods Cauterizing Flames, Flame Grasper, and Lava Shots. Cauterizing Flames comes with the pants and we keep this mod as it is pretty good. Every percent of overhealed gain through the skill increases our bonus firepower by 1% for 5 seconds up to 50%. Remember, Feed the Flames is so good at healing us that we'll always be utilizing this mod on every Feed the Flames usage for our Hadoukens. 
The second mod we'll be using on our pant is Flame Grasper, which enables the absorption of two additional targets. Okay, pause. We're going to go into a little deep dive with this mod as it is vital for our build. Feed the Flames by itself only absorbs one target. With this mod, we increase the total absorption of our targets to three. This does three things for us. One, it now ashes three targets as opposed to one when we use the skill. Two, it now heals us for even more HP as it now targets three enemies instead of two, allowing us to constantly overheal to utilize Cauterizing Flames. And three, the most important buff this mod gives us is the synergy with our Scorch Zealot set. If you've forgotten, the set notes that the damage of the Hadoken projectile increases by 25% for each enemy hit with Feed the Flames up to 100%. This bonus is then spent on the next melee skill use. You see where I'm going with this? If there are enough enemies around, and 90% of the time there is, one Feed the Flames will absorb three enemies, giving us a 75% increase in our Hadoken damage on the next melee usage. That's a pretty hot Doken, as one would say. I'm sorry. That said, a very important note about how Feed the Flames works with the absorption. The absorption of enemies lasts with multiple usage of Feed the Flames. One example, say you're in a situation where you can only Feed the Flames one opponent, like the Arbiter. You can continue to stack up Feed the Flames four times on the Arbiter, then use your Hadoken after four stacks for the 100% increase in damage. Another example is if you are aware of how spawns work in Outriders, you can utilize stacking Feed the Flames prior to an elite spawn for a one-shot Hadoken bomb. As you know, when we kill certain enemies, it unlocks the spawn of other enemies, for example, elites. Using the Hall of Sculptures trial as an example, the last big elite that spawns at the end of this trial is the Bird Elite with his Shadow Beast minions. Stack 4 Feed the Flames prior to his spawn, then launch our Hadoken for that oh-so-satisfying one-shot. The ideal combo for big Hadoken damage numbers is to keep stacking our Bullet Frenzy, make sure we have 4 stacks of Feed the Flames, Ash Blast, into a Hadoken. Who doesn't love big numbers? For Apocalypse mod, we have Lava Shots, and it does what it says. It increases our bonus firepower by 25% for our Volcanic Rounds. This is the best Apocalypse mod that can roll in pans for this build, so there is no better options here. And just like the chest piece, no recommendations for different pants. We want the Zealot pants. Heading to our gloves, we have Purple Gloves with the attributes of bonus firepower, long range damage, and status power. Almost a nice god rule. If we had close range damage here, that would be ideal. But more importantly, we have bonus firepower and status power. The mods we are running here are Ash Increased Range, Dum Dum Bullets, and Martial Arts. Ash Increased Range here is again great for us as it increases our Ash Range by 50%. This means more enemies are CC'd, which is great for survivability and means more enemies are hit with the Death Sentence debuff. The second mod on our gloves is Dum Dum Bullets for an increase of 12% to our Assault Weapon Damage, which again increases our Hadoken Damage as well as our Volcanic Rounds Damage. Great! As for Apocalypse mod, we have Martial Arts, which reduces the cooldown of our melee skill by 50%. This brings our melee down to a mere 3 seconds, which means more Hadokens. Gloves is the one piece in the build where we have a lot of options. The mods we like on our gloves are Ash Increase Range, Martial Arts, Dum Dum Bullets, Bullet Kindling, King Slayer, Concussive Force, Arms and Anomaly, and even Power Assimilation, although Power Assimilation is probably the worst out of the bunch. All the mods I've listed here drop natively on the gloves, so any combination here really works in a pinch if you don't have the recommended ones in Ash Increased Range, Dum Dum Bullets, and Martial Arts. If you don't have the ideal attributes but the right mods, that's fine in the interim. Lastly, for our boots and to complete our set bonus, we have the Scorch Zealot Feet with the mods in Final Breath, Bullet Absorption, and Nova. Final Breath is one of my personal favorites to run with this build, and since I've used it, I really can't go back to not using it. This mod reduces our Feed the Flames cooldown by an additional 50%, bringing it to 2.5 seconds, which lines up really nicely with our 3 second melee. This allows us to Feed the Flames into a melee for a big Hadoken damage more often. Pro tip though, do not immediately melee after using Feed the Flames, just shoot your gun for like half a second and then launch a melee if you want to abuse these cooldowns. This just ensures we keep our Bullet Frenzy stacks as using Feed the Flames right into a melee is cutting it really close on the 2 second grace period of our Frenzy buff. For our second mod, we have Bullet Absorption, which is a native on the Zealot Feet. This mod is what allows us to have infinite ammo, letting us always be stacking our Bullet Frenzy. This mod replenishes 40% of our ammo for every enemy affected by the skill. Thanks to Flame Grasper, anytime we feed the flames when there are more than 3 enemies present, we go right back up to full ammo. Just keep in mind, the less enemies absorbed means less ammo back. If you are running low on ammo, simply tap your gun to shoot less bullets until you can find an enemy to feed the flames to get ammo back to continue spamming. 
As for Apocalypse mod, we have Nova, the MVP mod for this build in my opinion. Nova increases our Feed the Flames range by 100%. This literally allows us to feed the flames from across the map and is a great utility for our survivability and our infinite ammo. Without this mod, this build just does not feel the same. Being able to feed the flames an enemy from Narnia to get back to full HP and full ammo is just so satisfying. For those that do not have Apocalypse items just yet, here is a list of 10 mods you want to focus on. Once you get your Apocalypse version of your gear pieces, you can update as you please. I'll also have this graphic linked in the video description down below. Before we head over to our step-by-step -step guide on how to one-shot Oakreel, I want to first quickly go over the two playstyles of this build. Playstyle number one is my personal favorite and the one I would recommend. This involves us being a DGen and always stacking Bullet Frenzy for maximum Hadouken damage. This is also the method I recommend to always use when playing in duos, trios, and hard carries. Remember that in duos and trios, the enemy's health is juiced to infinity, so always having Frenzy stacked for maximum Hadouken damage is preferred. Playstyle number 2 is if you want to play this build as a more of a traditional firepower build. For this playstyle, we will not be shooting our gun like DGENs to keep up our frenzy stacks and just shooting as we please and firing Hadoukens here and there when needed. This is a playstyle I only recommend for solos and the increased enemy health in duos and trios makes this playstyle not sustainable. The moment you've all been waiting for. How do we one shot the knowing ass Okreel boss fight? For those that skip to this section, go back, watch the full guide prior to getting here as if you don't you'll be extremely confused as to what's even going on. Two very important notes to succeed in this one shot is one, with the gear we have, we will require a weapon with at least 900k plus in firepower at Apocalypse 40. I recommend using the Outriders Outpost app to determine what firepower your current gun will have at Apocalypse 40 to see if you can do this combo at lower Apocalypse tiers. Link in the description down below to the weapon calculator. We'll also go over how we can one-shot Okreel if we have a weapon lower than 900k in firepower. 2. If Okreel has this ying yang status icon next to her health bar, which can show up in 3 stages as seen in the in-game guide, we will need to wait until it disappears as this icon means that the enemy has increased resistance, which means as long as this icon is present, it will reduce our damage. We need every bit of damage we have, so we will need to wait out this status icon. If she only has one half of the icon, it'll reduce our damage by around 15%. If she has the full yin yang icon, it'll reduce our damage by around 30%. She will always go into the increased resistance status when she summons her rock shield as she's getting ready to throw her rocks. Please also note that the one shot is only possible in solos. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is run and hide behind the pillar to the right of Okriel. Doing this allows us to stack our Bullet Frenzy without her constantly throwing those damn rocks. We're going to need to stack a Bullet Frenzy to its max 600 rounds. I recommend first going through 190-ish rounds of your normal rounds, then popping Volcanic rounds like you see me doing here, as when we pop rounds, it resets our ammo back to full. From here, we'll just need to keep a mental count on how much ammo we've spent. Remember to feed the flames in between to keep up our ammo as well as stacking our Feed the Flames to its max stack of 4. We'll hit the max stacks needed for the 100% increase in our melee damage while we're setting up for the one shot, so no need to worry too much about that. We'll actually go over the 4 stacks as we'll need to keep using Feed the Flames to keep up our ammo to keep up our frenzy stacks anyways. Once we have our 600 bullets stacked, we can then move closer to her for the one shot Hadouken. Notice when I'm moving up to do our combo, she has the full yin yang increased resistance status icon next to her health bar. Remember, this means we will do around 30% less damage. Since this icon is present, I'm simply just waiting it out before we do our combo. Once the icon drops, the combo is simple. We simply Ash Blast, so our Death Sentence debuff and Vulnerable debuff applies. Then, we launch our Doken. As you can see, bye bye Okriel. One very important note we'll need to keep in mind to successfully do this combo. Remember I mentioned our status power penalty earlier. This is important for this one-shot combo and why I recommend at least 3 pieces of our gear with status power. This will ensure that our vulnerable status is active long enough for us to take advantage of that 15% damage increase, which we will need to successfully pull off the combo. You should still be fine with 2 pieces of gear with status power if you go fast. If you only have 1 piece of gear with status power, you won't have enough time. So, what if you don't have a weapon with 900k plus in firepower? Well, this means we'll just need to swap one mod and add in bullet kindling. Usually, having a second pair of gloves with both bullet kindling and dum dum bullets are ideal, but if you don't have any gear swap handy, the one mod I recommend swapping out is Final Breath. This way, we'll still have both bullet kindling and dum dum bullets. The additional 12% damage to enemies afflicted with burn thanks to bullet kindling will give us the damage we need to complete the one shot. 
You also have a crafting station right before a fight, so this is super convenient. Just note that you're stuck with the mod swap if you don't have the gear swap for the rest of the trials, which is why I recommend removing Final Breath, as this is the most efficient mod to swap out to still keep the build relatively same. Now, adding Bullet Kindling does change one aspect of our combo. In case you've forgotten, remember our Volcanic Rounds apply burn in an AoE radius near the target. We will now need to keep that in mind to successfully do this combo with Bullet Kindling. Let's take a look. The setup will be the exact same leading up to Hadoukening Okriel. The only difference this time is we will need to shoot her near her feet, as you can see from this example, so that Volcanic Rounds applies the burn status, then Ash into our melee. Please be careful as to not shoot her directly, as if you do so, one bullet, thanks to our Max Frenzy stacks, will be enough to send her into her invulnerable phase before you can launch your Doken. Time for our favorite segment, the tips and tricks. We have quite a few for this build, so do pay attention. Tip number one, keep uptime of our Bullet Frenzy stacks by always shooting for juicy Adoken damage. We call this crab walking. Tip number two, fast shooting weapons are best for this build. We recommend double guns, SMGs, but you can also use assault rifles and LMGs. Tip number three, if we are low on ammo, we can save ammo by tapping our gun until we can find a target to feed the flames to get our ammo back. Tip number four, when playing with friends, let them get the door so we can continue stacking our bullet frenzy. Tip number five, we can dodge roll in between shooting our weapon to move slightly faster. Tip number six, we can shoot our Hadokens at the ground, through walls, or ceiling near enemies thanks to its amazing AoE. Tip number seven, feed the flames, works through walls, and is great at showing where enemies are. No more pesky riflemen hiding behind those barriers. Tip number eight, Feed the Flame also is one of our top survivability tools. One Feed the Flames and we're back to full HP. Tip number 9. Keep in mind our combo for maximum Hadoken damage. This is mostly notable in duos and trios for a big group of elites. We'll want to feed the Flames for our stacks, then Ash Blast into our Hadoken. Tip number 10. When fighting the Arbiter, don't focus too much on stacking Feed the Flames for your melee damage. He really likes to stagger us, so it's better to keep shooting him with Volcanic Rounds and using Feed the Flames and Melees to animation cancel the staggers. Tip number 11. To add on to the above tip, remember we can melee or Feed the Flames to animation cancel staggers applied by other enemies. For example, if you see a Corsair launching their disc at you, either melee before the disc impacts or Feed the Flames to animation cancel the stagger, allowing us to keep our Bullet Frenzy stacks. Tip number 12. To add on more to the above tip, if you get frozen by enemies, you can melee out of it and continue shooting to keep your frenzy stacks. Tip number 13. To add another addition to stagger, while we can animation cancel out of stagger, we will still take the full damage from the enemy, so do keep that in mind. Tip number 14. This build can be played as mainly a weapon build with added fireballs, playstyle number 2, but is more fun to Hadoken everything as often as possible, playstyle number 1. Feel free to play this build to your preferred playstyle. Tip number 15. Remember, Bullet Frenzy only works for assault weapons, so please do not try this build with pistol, shotguns, or sniper rifles. Tip number 16. Magma Shelter sucks. Don't use this mod. And lastly, tip number 17. Practice makes perfect. You may not get the hang of this build right away, but you will after playing it multiple times. Go out there and show Enoch what's up. That's it for this one. While my intention was not to make this another long guide, I realized there is a good amount of explanation needed, so for those that watched the whole video, you should now be experts. Again, a huge shout out to Naylor for putting this build together and for all his assistance in testing all the things. Do check out his YouTube link in the description down below for more Outrider shenanigans. If you have any additional follow-up questions or need clarifications, feel free to ask in the comments. As always, please check out any of my other Outriders content that should be popping up now, as well as a full list in the video description down below. Don't also forget to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash bear and also click that link in the comments to join the Discord homies. I'd also appreciate it if you'd be able to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until the next one, peace.